school-based goals. Students in kindergarten through fifth grade participate in MindUp curriculum as a tool to enhance social-emotional learning. Historical trends indicate that by increasing the percentage of students attaining the 61st percentile in both reading and math and WEA, we will see an increased level of success on the state assessments, specifically iLearn in grades 3, 4, and 5. The following graphs gives us a snapshot of our third through fifth grade students and how they are predicted to perform on the iLearn according to in the Indiana Map Growth Linking Study. 34% of our third grade students are predicted to score at or above proficiency in math and 27% are predicted to score at or above proficiency in reading. 25% of our fourth grade students are predicted to score at or above proficiency in math and 32% in reading. 24% of our fifth grade students are predicted to score at or above proficiency in math and 42% in reading. After analyzing our NWEA data, we at Central came up with some initiatives that we feel will target the learning gaps in both reading and math. Some of the next steps include direct vocabulary instruction in every second through fifth grade classroom, guided math and reading instruction, small group instruction in our virtual classrooms, social emotional learning in grades K to 5, and all things literacy. Elliot Dickinson. I'm one of the fourth grade teachers at Central Elementary School and I'm here today to talk to you about a new initiative that we have that focuses on academic grade level vocabulary. Um, maybe asking yourself why are we focusing on that? As a grade level uh, we went through and looked at our NOEA scores and we identified vocabulary as one of the areas of focus. Uh, we decided that we needed to come up with words that were important to students. We constructed lists of academic vocabulary words that we thought were essential and then we wanted to make sure that we had words that went along with both content areas math and reading. Um, in order to teach these words, we're going to use Marzano's six-step process. Uh, the first three steps focus on introducing the new term, and then the last three steps focus on uh, addressing different types of multiple exposures we can have that help the students shape and sharpen their understanding. So, in doing this, uh, we identify the word, and we uh, tell students what it is, we come up with a friendly description or explanation of it, we restate the new word, and then we have them uh, come up with an example in their own words. We, we shape it as a class, and we work on, them, uh, work on coming up with that definition together. We show the new word by making a picture or a symbol or graphic representation and then discuss that new word using our vocabulary notebooks, which I'll show you in just a minute. After that, students reflect on the new word. They revisit their vocabulary notebooks from time to time, uh, and then they will apply the new word or new words through games that allow them to play around with the terms. Swanson. I teach third grade at Central and I'm here just to give a quick overview of what guided instruction looks like in the classroom today. So guided instruction is an opportunity for teachers to observe and monitor students application of a targeted skill and then respond to those needs based upon their findings. So prior to guided instruction taking place two things need to occur. First thing, teacher has to establish an I can statement and communicate it to the students. That's so they know what to expect. Secondly, the teacher is giving a direct instruction mini lesson, and then once those two things are accomplished, guided instruction starts. So guided instruction has some components that the teacher is going to present a targeted skill or task to the students. They have time to think and collaborate, annotate. As they're doing that, the teacher is walking around observing what the students are speaking about and what they're putting down. And then lastly, based upon the teacher's observations and monitoring, they are then breaking the students into needs-based groups. Well, much of that still is happening today, although it looks slightly different than in the past. So first of all, that targeted task or question is still being posed to the students. But rather than them working in close groups or sharing materials, students are socially distant. Maybe they're talking across an aisle to each other, but teachers are still able to monitor those conversations. They're able to see student annotations by either having do them do things on Google Slides, through Google Forms, taking screenshots. If they're in the classroom in person, you can, the teacher then can have proximity and move around to see what the students are doing. Based upon that, that purposeful proximity, teachers can then establish needs-based groups. Now, th that used to look like students in groups coming back to one area of the classroom, other students rotating around literacy groups or math groups or stations. That's not happening currently, but that practice is still in place. If it's virtual, breakout groups are happening with your most needs-based interventions happening in one group, and then you're rotating through those students once you fixed errors or remissions with that one group of students. 
or the teacher has the mobility around the classroom rather than the students. The teacher can choose a place where they can have proximity to groups of learners that might need intervention, or maybe they're hitting just a few kids as they're moving throughout the classroom to say, hey, I noticed that you said this, let's talk about this, and having brief conversations to provide that specific correction and intervention on that skill before allowing them to have independent practice time. So again, guided instruction is still taking place in the classroom today. It does look different than in the past. The classroom volume might be louder in person. There might be many breakout rooms happening when we're virtual, but guided instruction is still taking place because it is essential to making sure that our students are getting what they need in order to be successful and demonstrating what they can do in terms of their learning target. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Sydney Hawkins and I'm the second grade virtual teacher here at Central Elementary and I'm here to talk to you today about how I use remediation in small groups in my virtual classroom. When I remediate with my class, I tend to pull a couple kids who are having a really hard time understanding the skill or the lesson during reading or math. I pull them based on their body language shown during the Google Meet, their participation, just little hand signals that we use throughout our lesson. I will just give them a short and condensed version of the lesson that I just taught and then I will go and release them to do the assignment that I post for that lesson. And then I'll go in to Seesaw, that's usually when it's over, um, look at their stuff to see if they're really, really understanding. And if they're not, I will pull them at the end of the day during our group time and I will give them a simpler version of the skill. That way they just have the basis and then later on when I pull them again, we'll just keep applying it, applying it, applying it until they get it. So there's a little tidbit on how I implement remediation in small groups in my classroom. Have a great day. Hello, I am Central Elementary's homeschool advisor, Mrs. Moore. I work with students on an individual basis. Reasons may include, but are not limited to, social-emotional skills, mind-up curriculum in the classroom, sudden changes in behavior, academic concerns, anger behavior management, family changes due to death, divorce, or separation, social skills, friendship concerns, building self-confidence, I link parents, guardian, and staff to community services. In the classroom, we always follow our mind-up curriculum and focus on the students trying to regulate their breathing and teaching breathing techniques. I also do a mind-up morning, so in the morning, um, right after the announcements, we do some slow breathing techniques that help the students start their day. I have, um, this is my first year here at Central Elementary and I am really enjoying working with the team of faculty and staff that we have here at Portage Township Schools. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Katie Lovell and I am the Library Media Center Specialist here at Central Elementary School and I wanted to talk about our approach to literacy. We at Central are always trying to improve our students, whether that means taking our excellent readers and pushing them higher or taking our kids who maybe need a little bit more help to get to that mark. Um, although we have a large focus in AR, we don't want students just reading for the point. So we're always looking for new ways to engage and intrigue our kids. Um, we offer all kinds of incentives. We're always looking for different ways to get the kids just excited about genuinely reading. I really feel that people who aren't readers just haven't read the right book yet. So we really push the kids to find something that they enjoy. We buy a lot of it and we help them to read. Um, one approach we took this year is we took our kids who were on the bubble for Nuia and we made small groups. Mrs. Solar and myself delivered those books to those students. We made a huge deal about it and we read with them virtually and they loved it. They begged for us to have a second small group and we have seen growth in those students. Another thing we did was our virtual literacy night. Um, at Central we're usually really big with family involvement and events because as most of you know it starts at home. So we actually work together as a staff. We 
all read short stories and we put it together to have a virtual literacy night that we streamed online. And that way parents could be at home, they could read with the kids from the safety of their home. They got to see us as staff. We had a huge turnout, it was excellent. And right now we are currently working on a readathon. And in the first three days, collectively as a school, we have read more than 29,000 minutes in three days out of 400 kids. So whether our students are virtual or in person, literacy is always one of our number one goals with our kids and working to make improvements is what we strive for here. Here are some of the ways, exciting ways, that we celebrate our students at Central Elementary. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share a quick snapshot of some of the great things that are happening at Central Elementary School. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Appreciate that. Did anybody have any comments or questions? Very impressed with the amount of uh, minutes that were read. Twenty-nine thousand is a lot. Yeah, it's very impressive. I want to commend the uh, principal, Mrs. Solar, and her staff. Uh, they did an excellent job, outstanding job, in explaining the different initiatives, the vocabulary approach, the guided instruction, the small group and the differentiation. And of course, we can't forget about that social emotional component. So thank you for sharing that and for also celebrating all of their achievements. Thank you so much. I think it's uh, very important that when we see these presentations, um, I appreciate that the board sees those results for NWEA and what our students are currently predicted to perform on the iLearn assessment, fully knowing that the goal is to, for continuous improvement. Um, our principals, and Mrs. Solar specifically in this presentation, was able to demonstrate that rather being stifled by the results, it's a matter to take collective action, to collaborate with students, families, um, the support staff. There were support staff members in that video as well as teachers in that video that clearly know what it takes through uh, that collaboration with family. Great. Well, thank you so much. It was a great presentation that uh, never ceases to amaze me, even in these times, so much activity and good work's being done um, in our buildings for our kids. So thank you for all your efforts. Okay, next presentation we have is Chrisman Elementary State of the Schools from uh, Principal Hufford. My name is Scott Hufford. And I thank you for the opportunity to share an update on Christman Elementary. Christman Elementary continues to take steps toward becoming a high reliability school. Marzano has identified the first three levels of high reliability schools as first, a safe, supportive, and collaborative culture, second, effective teaching in every classroom, and third, a guaranteed and viable curriculum. At Chrisman, a safe, supportive, and collaborative culture begins with our work in PLCs, or professional learning communities. Our teachers meet at least weekly to discuss student assessment data and to plan instruction. The last 12 months have made the need for a safe and supportive culture even more important. Whether meeting in person or through Google Meets, our students have participated in Mind Up lessons, have selected library books, and have received technology support when needed. Collaboration to support virtual students has included curbside material and meal pickup, as well as home deliveries. Marzano's second level is effective teaching in every classroom regardless of whether the classroom is virtual or in person. Currently, two-thirds of Christmas students are in person, 
and one-third are virtual. This school year has required flexibility and perseverance. We began the year with all 431 students taught virtually by the 19 Chrisman K-5 teachers, all housed at Chrisman. As families have chosen virtual or in person, our administrative team has tried to keep as many students as possible with their original teacher. At this time, Chrisman's 435 students have 24 different K-5 teachers who are housed in five different buildings, all of these teachers following the same curriculum. A guaranteed and viable curriculum ensures that all students have an equal opportunity to learn. Each student has access to the same content, knowledge, and skills in each classroom. Each grade level in our district has identified the priority standards to be covered. Our curriculum maps are aligned across the district. The maps are aligned to the Envision Math and Benchmark Workshop reading sequences. With Benchmark, our teachers are utilizing workshop model for instruction. Each week, students are taking common benchmark reading assessments online. Data-driven instruction is using information gathered from learning results to determine what comes next in instruction. Chrisman teachers utilize assessment data to plan instruction, including both remediation and enrichment. Formative assessments gauge student understanding. District assessments, including NWEA reading and math, and DIBBLES for reading in the primary grades provide data that identifies the current achievement level and abilities of our students while also showing growth over time. I read and I learn state assessments, though not given last year, identify the proficiency level or current grade level standards. These may be used to determine remediation needs. Chrisman students in grades 1 to 5 took the NWEA assessment when we returned to in-person instruction in October. The NWEA assessment allows us to project how students will perform on iLearn. The last column in the table indicates the percentage of students projected to perform either at or above proficiency on the upcoming iLearn assessment based on our fall 2020 NWEA data. As you can see by the data, Chrisman third grade reading and fifth grade math were not performing at as high a level as the other four groups in the fall. The data from the recently completed winter NWEA will be monitored by teachers to determine student instructional needs. NWEA has shown a strong correlation to iLearn results. Since NWEA is taken three times each year, it is an excellent tool for tracking student growth. Chrisman has set achievement goals based on our NWEA outcomes. For both reading and math, the percentage of students scoring at or above the 61st percentile will increase on the spring NWEA compared to the winter NWEA performance. Attaining the 61st percentile or higher on the NWEA assessment provides our students a strong opportunity to demonstrate grade level proficiency on iLearn. That is why we've selected this as the goal. For tracking these goals, it was extremely important to have a high percentage of virtual students take the winter NWEA test. At Chrisman, 87%, 124 students, came in to take this test. In addition to our reading and math goals, Chrisman has identified other goals based on both strengths and weaknesses we have determined 
in part from our panorama survey of parents, students, and staff. We are focused on parent and family engagement, a safe and disciplined environment, cultural competency, and reviewing attendance. We plan to utilize the Panorama Survey again this spring to monitor our progress. Collaborating as a team requires strong communication among all stakeholders. Our site-based team and building leaders analyze building and district data for trends. Grade levels meet in professional learning communities using assessment data to guide instruction. Teachers conference with students, encouraging them to set strong academic goals. And parents and students participate in virtual conferences with the teacher to discuss performance and strategies for improvement. At Chrisman, we have strived to celebrate student successes in new and creative ways. Principals Awards are not just for in-person students, but were a focus during e-learning last spring. Virtual activities, including clubs and even a virtual dance party, help students stay connected. Recognizing the accomplishments of our students and staff is critical to future success. Thank you for allowing me to share a little about Chrisman Elementary this evening. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Comments or questions? Yes. Um, again, thank you for presenting to both uh, principals and Principal Huffer for your outstanding presentation, and I applaud you and your staff at Christman. Um, I, I wrote down notes about curriculum maps and data-driven instruction and NUIA scores, and I really appreciate that 87 percent um, were there, although they were virtual and in person, they were able to take the test and the, the survey, finding out what your community and your staff and all of the students, what they need and um, celebrating achievements. But these two words stood out, flexibility and perseverance. And I think that that describes, those two words describe what's going on in not only at Crispin, but all the schools uh, with everything that they're facing, but uh, thank you and congratulations to your staff. Good job. Uh, I would just like to also mention that Mr. Hufford is um, our most senior principal in the district, and um, his leadership, as you know, over the years has been very sound um, as a colleague, as a mentor, um, as the principal of my two daughters in elementary school, now one in elementary school. Um, and I think when you look at both his presentation, Mrs. Solar's presentation, the presentations you've seen from the high school, um, I know Mrs. Stewart and Mrs. Caballero also already presented. And what you're going to take away from this, I hope, is that we clearly communicated to our stakeholders that learning and achievement in a pandemic is still just as crucial but the clear communication and collaboration with families has even increased. Um, at a time when being face-to-face -face may not be all that possible, just even in the turnout of our elementary parent-teacher conferences virtually and the ones that we have upcoming that I anticipate are gonna be highly attended as well for middle school and high school. Um, we are using data-driven instruction we are setting those goals with students. They're aware of their goals. They're able to monitor them. Um, and they're celebrating their successes and then focusing furthermore on those areas of still needs improvement. Um, our focus on high reliability schools remains very strong and steady from the last five years to include those social emotional initiatives with a safe and collaborative culture and the academics as well. I just wanna again state my appreciation to the principals as their message is consistent. They are utilizing the research and best practices to ensure students have academic success in the classroom and are happy and healthy students um, now and in their future life. 
and they are not only implementing this pra best practice and research, but they are monitoring it with fidelity and honesty. Because if we look at everything from rose-colored glasses and aren't able to look at where we have improvements to make, obviously our kids are the ones who lose out. So I always appreciate that they're honest about the growth that needs to happen, and they're very forthcoming and collaborative, and that I cannot, I cannot thank them enough for all that they do for the kids in this community. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you both for uh, outstanding presentations and for being here tonight. You don't have to stay if you don't want to. Okay, we'll move on now. We have uh, adjustments to the agenda. Are there any adjustments to the agenda from the board? No? Okay, we'll move on to our superintendent's consent agenda, which includes our personnel report for February 22nd, 2021, donation report, and claims report, and facility use request report. Do we have a motion to approve the superintendent's consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Second. We have the motion and a second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Trustee Mileta. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Next, we have our board consent agenda, which has the minutes from our discussion meeting of February the 8th, as well as the minutes from the policy committee meeting of February 18th. Do we have a motion to approve the board's consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Second. We have the motion and second. Any discussion? We'll call the roll, please. Trustee Mileta. Yes. Trustee Williams, yes. Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Okay, we'll move on now to uh, board development and committee reports. Uh, any board members have committee reports they'd like to report out? Yes, the policy committee met last Thursday, and we reviewed 18 current policies and 20 new policies. And these policies will go for first reading later in the meeting. Thank you. I know that's a very tedious and difficult uh, committee to be on, so I appreciate uh, you doing that work. Trustee Vasquez? Yes, the uh, Portage Education Foundation is acknowledging that this is public schools week. Uh, many are showing support by wearing red for ed here. Um, please consider supporting the Education Foundation by purchasing the education license plate as well as designating Portage Township Education Foundation charity of choice when you place an Amazon order through Amazon Smile. And if you have a moment, please check out the Portage Education of Township Foundation Facebook page for information about our schools, the monthly 500 club winners, events, and different ways to support the foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? We'll move on to old business. We do not have any old business. We have new business, which is our recommendation and approval of the 2021-2022 school board calendar. <coughs> Hope everyone had an opportunity to review that. Um, do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We'll call the roll, please. Trustee Williams, yes. Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Trustee Maletta. Yes. Next, we'll move on. We have our first reading of NEOLA policies uh, as listed. I believe everyone has received these as well and had an opportunity to look at them. Any discussion or comments on these? No? No actions needed. It's just seen as first reading. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our superintendent reports. Dr. Alanez. Um, in front of you, this evening, you will find uh, the STEM Champs STEM Club. Uh, Mr. DePasquale had shared how excited they were to be able to do this, and you have the little narrative attached. They did pick um, the color that is in front of us. It is a mint green, um, so we'll go with that. But I just thought it was a, a really great opportunity, and I want to thank him and those others who are involved in making sure that those students still have that opportunity, even while... Um, having a virtual club. 47 students, I believe, are involved. So that's a great, great opportunity for kids. Um, I also wanted to share with you that I did take back to Mrs. Evers Lowy how the board was very much appreciative of the good news report in that format again. 
Um, so we are going to start the first meeting of each month. We'll have the interns doing those reports again. Great. So um, just another great opportunity, and I appreciate the, the positive feedback, as did she. Also want to mention that today is National Bus Drivers Day, so we did send out just a, a thank you, a, a note of appreciation for all of our drivers, our um, bus attendants, <coughs> those who dispatch and route um, our kids, make sure that they're safe getting to CTE, special ed courses, field trips, after school events, um, extracurriculars and athletic events. So I know that you share in the appreciation of what those folks do for kids every day to include now just delivering meals. So uh, just another addition. I was fortunate to attend the ISBA State House Day and I know um, Dr. Finley did as well and I'm, I know she'll have a report out for you as far as legislative is concerned. But it was a very productive meeting. A lot of legislators were directly involved in the communication with us and we were able to um, send in comments and questions and it was, a, it was a very beneficial day that I felt like was very collaborative. So um, good things to come and I appreciate that as always, Terry did a great job facilitating that meeting on behalf of ISBA. Dr. Stevens and I last week uh, uh, attended virtually the winter seminar for the Indiana Association of Public School Superintendents and last week as well, uh, the winter conference for the National Superintendents uh, Association. So there was much work on equity and social emotional learning where the focus is. And we of course attended different presentations to make sure that we could connect and network with the various districts across our nation and throughout um, our area as well. We have some upcoming excitement for high reliability schools. I had shared this with you in one update. Um, each school will have a coach assigned through Marzano's Research Laboratory, and they will each have 11 sessions with um, a trained high reliability schools expert from Marzano's Research Lab. Um, and we are getting certified in each of those three levels as a high reliability school district, and of course, focusing first on safe and collaborative in environment. It involves a lot of hard work and a lot of criteria driven standards as far as what it means to be a safe and collaborative school culture, what it means to have a guaranteed and viable curriculum and effective teaching in every classroom. Um, fortunately, I do believe that this will be just further opportunities to celebrate what we are doing well, but then again, to also learn from the best to see what we can do to further enhance our curriculum and instruction and a safe and collaborative culture for our students, our teachers, and all other employees. We now have Parent Square secure documents up and running, so the days of the folding machine um, are going to be coming to an end. Um, we've done some pilots so that individuals are receiving their textbook rental fees and in the future other secure documents will go through that now that we have that opportunity. So it's been a great addition and I want to thank uh, the finance team and Mr. Lesich and his team for making sure that that all goes smoothly along with Melissa Devers Lowey. Um, I believe that's all I have other than just a reminder that we have an upcoming board tour and um, the next meeting that we have is, I will have that in your weekly update this week, but I'm excited to share some of those exciting things with you and you have in front of you your latest update on the East Pool project, which it's just really, really starting to look like an editorium. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Any questions for the superintendent from that update? Comments? No? Okay. Um, anybody have anything to discuss that's not on the agenda today? Um, if I may, I would like to um, state that I appreciate the Fagley Middle School and how under their leadership of the uh, principal, Mrs. Caballero and her staff, for celebrating Black History Month, as well as I'm sure all the schools have, uh, Fagley Middle School students began every day during this month by sharing what they researched and learned about African Americans who impacted our world. They also learned about the many contributions that were made not every day, just not globally, but nationally and in our very own communities. In our schools, we have individuals 
such as Mrs. Anderson, who makes sure that our food service program runs effectively, which impacts all of our students and families. She is admired and appreciated by all of us. Mrs. Taylor is the first African-American principal in our school district. She is dedicated to our students, families, and staff. We applaud her for her enthusiasm and hard work and for being a role model to all of our students at Ellsworth. And our very own Shauna, Dr. Shauna Finley, who is our first African-American school board meeting member. She was not able to attend this meeting. We're so proud of everything that she has accomplished in the field of education and as a community activist. So as we celebrate Black History Month, we're giving our students the opportunity to learn about all the contributions that and the strengths that our children need to learn about and so that they know that there are endless possibilities for them for success. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anybody else have anything? Did we get any public comment forms? We did not. We did not. Okay. So our next meeting will be March the 8th. I'll be back here again at 5 o'clock. will be our next discussion meeting. So with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.